I think let us get going because otherwise we will lose on time. Uh, <coughs> I have seen uh, all the submissions. So, group wise one mind map was posted and we will come to discuss those mind maps because there are some observations. Uh, can you see each other's mind maps? No, you cannot. So, okay, I will ask Lohit to put up a cumulative PDF of all the mind maps so that you can see them first of all. Because uh, like you did for the grammatical correction assignment that you corrected each other's assignment, mind maps also can be done in a similar way. Now, there is a range of things that people have done and uh, <coughs> there are there are some mind maps having lots of sentences and paragraphs. On the other side, there are mind maps where um, very precise definitions are given. On one side, they, they have not specified what is the starting point of the whole talk. So, everything looks black and white and 10 point aerial. So, you cannot make out from where is this originating and everything is connected to each other in some way that that puzzle is taking some time to solve for me also that where is the starting point. So, these kind of things are happening in, in those mind maps. So, that is that is fine. So, <coughs> going ahead <coughs> what we saw last time was to plan the talk this time what we will focus on is to execute whatever you have planned and uh, we will have some activity based on how how to decide graphics and first of all let me see if I can give you a over, overview of uh, graphics. We saw uh, that how story is important and what was your experience while making the mind maps like could you find out story in your talks or uh, but I can see especially for two three groups I can very easily make out that when they had come to meet me after the first session here they had shown me three four pages of written content and their mind map actually looks beautiful. That day I could not understand probably how will they finish it off in the talk, but when I saw their mind map it was quite precise in sense I could make out everything what they wanted to say. I think that was uh, brain drain are these people from that group here brain drain group there you were one of the right. So, I think the mind map now looks very crisp because that day I do not know who was uh, showing me the written document about brain drain uh, somebody had written about it and he was trying to explain me that this is the topic and uh, but what I saw on mind map was quite impressive. Okay, so, we started off with how stories will be interesting for people. We also saw this process of we completed the plan process. Today, we are going to talk about outline and how to create bulleted graphics and mainly we will focus on type of graphics. So, how many types of graphics is that you are aware of can like can you just uh, okay, so, we just did that also some submitted mind maps I will just come to that maybe sometime later I was just discussing with one of them right now. Okay, so, from going from mind maps to outline stage is uh, currently what you are I think some of them have also submitted the outlines when they were supposed to submit only mind maps, but people have gone ahead and given out outlines also of, of the talks what they are planning to and they are fairly uh, nearby what has to be there. But some common guidelines you can just remember are about instead of using sentences try to use short phrases and uh, so forget paragraphs you have to not even sentences you have to come to short phrases and that becomes very important. I think one of the lectures covered how to uh, about the English part like how to paraphrase a complete concept into a short phrase. So, I think uh, that must have been already covered if not then it is important to be covered probably I will just have a look at that. And the thing which I wanted to show you is like this. So, the similar topic what we had started out that day about impact of uh, mythology on Bo Bollywood. So, if that is the outline what we are trying to talk about then how will a typical slide look like and uh, that is a question lot of people ask me that uh, when we try to fit in our content into the slide we have a problem. So, let us just see uh, one of the slides probably the introduction slide. So, you have 
so the whatever the topic title or the title of the slide uh, or the section like introduction and uh, you have problem and definition and all that. So, instead of having a complete slide on that just make it as a title and make the subtitle which is actually the topic of discussion and use the bullets to talk about it. So, uh, that is how you can you can cut on the number of slides at the same time if you have images <coughs> for certain things like you have mythology is used everywhere and you have to show some some cases where it is actually used. So, that is the time you have to introduce images and I am coming to different types of images actually. <coughs> so, there are different types of graphics in static and uh, moving graphics, but within static graphic itself the there is a huge range of uh, variety of things which has happened and most of the time there is a big confusion over which one to use at what time. So, that is why I am trying to focus today's talk on that where I will try to distinguish between the drawing illustrations, photographs, where to use photographs and when to use uh, pie charts or graphs or something like that. So, any, any idea like uh, why why photograph versus a pie chart or uh, illustration versus a, ok let us start with basic ones illustration versus a photograph what additional things does a photograph allow you to show which a illustration cannot show any thought on that uh, I am comparing between a illustration or a drawing and a photograph what value does a photograph add or a illustration add it is vice versa anything specifically can you make out a difference you all agree that uh, photographs and illustrations will be different right, but uh, what will be the additional value of that. So, suppose I have to show uh, first step on moon what would be the graphic I would try to use out of these graphics. So, the talk is <laughs> expedition to the moon which one photographs I even further if you go <coughs> photographs yes, but uh, yeah those days we had photographs probably, but we also have video. So, we can use video, but if video is not available photograph is the next best. So, why photograph and why not illustration. Huh? anything proof right. So, it is it is more realistic I can believe on a photograph rather than an illustration. So, on the other side if I have to compare two things I will uh, apart from the photograph if there is numerical comparison involved I will go for charts I can go for pie charts I can go for graphs and so the these are uh, taken from a book called uh, graphics for learning uh, by uh, Ruth Clark. Uh, and they have established a range of graphics and uh, their purposes are also mentioned there. So, I am just showing you uh, the that range how different types of graphics can be used for different purposes. The most commonly used and most uh, badly used graphics are the decorative graphics. So, most of the time people are giving a talk about military or something and you find some majors uh, clip art use there or something on IT related you will find one computer uh, clip art used there which is uh, has nothing to do with the topic as such, but it is just there because people want to add image. So, the rule says add graphics instead of text and people just keep on adding clip art. So, avoid clip art as much as you can because that will not add any value as such for your uh, topic what you are trying to say, but for decorative purpose if you have to use. So, this I have picked up from a article on how um, watching TV is developing sedentary lifestyle in the kids. So, they wanted to the, the article talks about various things, but the image has no relation as such in terms because they are all they are away from each other like they show television video games and some chips packets lying around. So, all of that is covered in the in the article itself, but there is no direct association or nobody can make out from the illustration itself why this establishment has to be 
understood by people so there is no proof given for that then there are graphics called representational graphics and mostly consisting of photographs but in uh, modern times and especially for subjects which are related to com science and it you will have screenshots also as representational graphics so whenever you want to talk about a software or a application or a tool then it's easy to tell you uh, using a screenshot of that tool so that's how you can use representational graphics then there is something very interesting called mnemonic graphics now there is a marriage between the text and the associated images with that and everybody remembers how january february was remembered for 30 days and 31 days and that visual has got deep rooted and whenever even during a meeting i have seen top corporates using this technique to spend out okay so 31st is a 31st july is what so they just try to do that it's it's so deep rooted because of that marriage has happened at uh, between the graphics and the text whatever you wanted to convey similarly there are mnemonic graphics created especially to teach children like see for cat if they want to say that they try to embed cat inside the sea so that that association is permanent and my always my problem is that if they have to say see for crocodile or something then they will have a problem another is this only association with one subject as as far as this image is concerned then there are organizational graphics where you have qualitative relationship shown so by qualitative i what i mean is um, you can easily see that hostel 12 and 13 is far away from main gate and people staying there will have a problem going there in the night but it will not tell you exactly how much time because its map is not according to scale it's just showing a, a qualitative image of what is iit campus looking like and you can just make out certain uh, understanding out of Uh, out of these images but you cannot predict very very uh, precisely based on this type of images for that you need relational graphics so if you have relational graphics where distance between hostels uh, distance between main gate and different hostels is related is shown in a graph then you can easily see that the tallest one is the longest distance so that relational graphic will give you that option and uh, whenever you have to show any quantitative relationship that's the time you use it and there are now various ways and uh, microsoft had made it easy by having the center excel sheet and create pie chart and you'll get a pie chart directly but i have seen some very interesting uh, problem pie charts where people have we have given some figures but they don't add up to 100 or something so these kind of mistakes are also done in that <coughs> okay then <coughs> there are something called transformational graphics where you have to show change over time and things are changing after some steps and you cannot show that in one photograph or one illustration that's the time you show multiple images of the process whatever you are trying to show so this is the pulley mechanism and how uh, what are the three different steps the one missing thing here is that they have not numbered the thing so i'm just going by left to right and that's why i'm understanding but otherwise this is one mistake i just was trying to see here there are uh, something called interpretive graphics where the user is allowed to follow the process by giving arrows and then you can make out the entire story and some of the very basic ones are the water cycle or life cycle of a frog or some so those have those illustrations and then there is a arrow given so that you can follow the process in a easy format and that's very very important for something like principles or sorry procedures or processes to be explained so what after this is already explained in that so that's how this type of graphics will keep on going ahead this is a rough mapping of what type of graphic should be used for which type of content although this is just their interpretation and i'm uh, there are there are different ways where we can uh, we, we can argue about this but this is one of the representation that's why i just thought of uh, including it here what they start off with is the type of content is to be noted before you use a particular graphic so that content can be a fact or a concept or a principle or a procedure or a process and based on that you can use either of the graphics and that's how uh, for example 
just for showing a fact that uh, you have to say that um, a particular uh, okay the uh, in chemistry what I showed that image of uh, it is a 14 feet high glass model which is created for uh, vapor uh, liquid equilibrium or some such um, experiment to be conducted. So, if you have to convey that that this is a very big uh, experiment apparatus then you can just take a photograph because nobody will believe you unless until you show a real photograph. So, that is just representation of a fact. Similarly, when there is a process or a procedure then you need dynamic visual. So, you can use videos here because you have to show principle principally actually means that you have to also show the comparison. So, if I do this then that will happen. So, if you have to show that type of comparison then you need motion graphics you, you cannot do just with the static graphics. So, this is uh, a kind of benchmark considered in multimedia systems by whatever the people have already told and uh, Ruth Clark is one of the leading researchers in this area. So, that is what it means. I have some <coughs> examples actually. Uh, so, when you say that we have to show some relational graphics and we have a table that product 1 in and product 2 and product 3 how it did in multiple years then table is one way of representing it, but it becomes really boring because you cannot concentrate on those figures and you cannot make out if 7 and 9 has how much of difference. The immediately if it is transformed into a graph then you can see the difference very clearly. Then there is another table and this is quite commonly seen that you have what is so bad about this? You have poverty rates on one uh, uh, county A, B, C, D on one side and the percent of poverty on the other side. What is the problem with this table? Pardon? Ah, right. You can just show the other one probably. Okay. So, what you see is the, the boxes are important because they can classify wherever you want a line in between. The alignment is very important because when you have numbers like 11.12 and uh, below that you have 22 which is not a decimal then you have to convert that also to 22.00 and then write percentage so that it is easy for people to understand. <coughs> so, as you see the 8.4967 is rounded off to 8.50 and the left aligned will tell you that exactly they are all in one order. There are interesting graphs which are good and bad. For example, this graph which was uh, showing a population of a county was having a range from 1940 to 2000 and if you see the, the increase has been from 5000 to 10000. What is the problem with this? The range is unnecessarily shown up to 50000 right when it is not reaching there. So, probably the easy depiction of this could have been like this. So, just reduce the top portion and you do not have to show that you can just touch up to 10000 and that is done. So, that is how you can easily make the focus clear for the people who are trying to look at your presentation and then they that will make more sense to these people. Now, in your uh, concepts what you have submitted we will now just run through those uh, different uh, mind maps and try to see. So, if any person from your team is available here, so we can just have a small discussion here. I am just uh, trying to show if uh, yeah, this is one more uh, representation of. So, when you have multiple phases to show and they are really uh, verbose. So, it is easy to pack them off into boxes and show that phase 1 ends here and phase 2 ends here and phase 3 ends here. So, you, you can easily see the flow between the phases which are <coughs> which are otherwise very difficult to read. If you make a bulleted slide of this then people will not remember what, what is the end point of phase 1 and what is the starting point of phase 2. So, it is easy to put it up into boxes so that people remember that how phase 1 ends and how phase 2 starts. <coughs> So, I have uh, some of the uh, some of the mind maps here and I would like people to comment on that. 
Now this is uh, by the group for accidental discoveries. Is that group here? Yeah, right. So they had tried to add on their timeline along with this, which is done by no other group, but this is good. And uh, what I think was striking me was uh, they had they had given enough importance to various science discoveries, the examples they wanted to talk about. <coughs> now they have marked like seven and a half minutes for showing uh, this discoveries. They have also I think what is this one, two, th these are the sections. Okay. So uh, you start with introduction then you go to motivation behind the talk then describe five things and then conclusion. So what is take away here not yet decided. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is a ten minute talk. Huh? It's a ten minute talk. It's a ten minute, right? right. That's what I told them. Is it ten minutes or six minutes? We have planned five minutes. Okay. Yeah, but the question they were asking is that how will five people speak in six minutes or five minutes? One or? minute each. Uh, one minute each. <laughs> Okay. See, it's going to end up as a five-minute video. So maybe we can argue that a ten-minute uh, video recording can be edited down into a five-minute video. Mm -hmm. But usually, a TED talk is not that desperately edited. If I just compare the earlier one with this, what is the striking difference you find here? Can you all read this because it's really small? But if I zoom it, it is getting pixelated. Keep as keep as per your need. Which group is this? Ah, oh. okay. So <coughs> comments on that. So apart from the group, anybody else can comment on this? You could see, we comment. Huh? <laughs> you can't see it. <laughs> that's that's the main comment. So let it pixelate. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. <coughs> okay. So what shall we keep as per our need? Causes of spending unnecessarily, disadvantage, ways to improve and advantages. So there is a kind of you know that building up of tension and the relief of Yeah. So the bullets are fine. I think where where we have a issue is this area probably. That's it is too much stuff for the kind of timeline we are talking about. So I am not sure whether they will finish off even reading these bullets within 6 minutes and uh, explanation I do not know how much time will they, they require for this. So what is the solution for this by the way, okay. so if this is the problem that you have, you have these things, how will you pick up uh, <coughs> the problem things out of this, how will you sanitize this uh, talk to fit it into 6 minutes, if you are given only 6 minutes now how will you, how will you try to address this. Does it make sense to have a 10 minute time presentation which is recorded offline Squeezed in, <coughs> right. As a 5 minutes. So the group guys any thoughts on this or other groups probably can help, can tell me. Anything? Uh, from the group people. I think you can go with the second level bullets like resources and time and uh, maybe wastage of time, money and social inequality. So disadvantages of keeping extra has to be ha uh, packed up into one big Right. Instead of that mapping, you can just club into one direct. Right. That's fine. We had this one about table manners. Is that group here? Table manners group. Back benches. Okay. So. <coughs> 
any comments on this can you see this now so you tried to have two two distinct problems in this behavioral and other problems so why to why to title this as others you can maybe give some definition to this also because they are about utensils used and manners vary across geographical areas so there can be two sub bullets within this itself others can you create two two bullets out of this titles out of this probably and they, these are these are clubbed into things that matter versus the good part and the bad part so what i am not able to understand is are there these are also behavioral or sorry these are also table manners where uh, other objects are making influence or it's just the way people sit on the table so if that is the case it is still part of uh, table manner you can just tag it maybe cultural or depending on uh, cutlery used on table or something like that so that will be easy for us to understand in sense others will be a very very generic title for uh, people to understand <coughs> we had uh, accidental discoveries we saw that we had brain drain in india yeah i was talking about this some time back is that team here brain drain yeah okay so look at the use of color here what's so striking about it you can easily see the bullets what are the three main points they are going to talk about they are going to talk about reasons majors and effects so or sorry reasons effects and majors right is this the way it is but what the other group had done was to number that was easy for pe for people to understand what manner are you going to present so that way you can also use that technique and there are some interconnectivity also shown here for example career growth is directly related to uh, if you bring lucrative opportunities here then career growth will also happen in india and so that connection is established here there is uh, so which are each of these tools and which is a better tool which is a which are each of these tools and which is a better tool better tool because the others are very hierarchical and this is more graph like right right yeah okay maybe i i feel that as a open question if you ask me uh, personally i feel this way is, is more easy for me to think about rather than the organizational one but yeah open question uh, which one is a better representation in terms of uh, mind map the representational one where hierarchical where or uh, open graphic kind of thing which one did you prefer like while doing it what was your feedback open graphic how many for open graphic like how many people like that how many people like that hierarchical one was there any third option i don't know others people others are not giving any comment on that okay didn't like hmm didn't like any didn't like <laughs> okay there was this one about busting common myths is the group here yeah ah this was the one i was talking about i don't know where to start because the the interconnectivity is is very difficult so i i i thought it starts from myths and then it is also connected to this but uh, was very yeah starting is oval always right but which the the objects which are very small in size and uh, they also seem to be like oval but the easier point would be that put some color in the center one and just get rid of it so that everybody knows what is it also similarly you can have the bold thing for like what uh, this group did to have the bold colored things for the <coughs> secondary level things and then tertiary can be anything so that's that way it will be easy also there is a setting in uh, this clear uh, nahi, what what was the tool used to free mind so you can have the graph uh, probably uh, there is some tool uh, there is a option there to 
just make it straighten up or something like that. They, I don't know what is that called exactly. I have that open here. Maybe I'll show that. But uh, that makes it lot more easy. Okay, here is about smart campus. With the center one completely blank. And uh, I know it because the title of the image says that it is about smart campus, but it is nothing written here actually. I do not know, it just got squeezed probably. Is that group here? Smart campus, okay. What really happened here? Just got squeezed because you just, okay. And uh, so you have gain. So you start with why, what is the requirement, what is the ultimate goal and if you, if you achieve this then what will be the gains, right or it is other way around. Okay, this is 1, 2, 3 and 4, right. Okay. Mm. I can see the talks will have to be at least about 10 minutes each, that will be Yeah, every talk looks like a 10 minute talk. Then we have to cover it in about 2 weeks, all the talks. Right. Minimal invasive education. Is this group here? Ah, right. Okay, so you start. Uh, this is the hole in the wall. So you started with. Where where do we start? Background. Ah, there is a third page here, right? Ah, right. background huh? out of this we prepare the presentation right right so there will be five or four people no six people on stage right it's up to them how how, how they want to use those six, six minutes within they that can okay. be actors also they can yeah. enact the scenario ha ah, here is that option that uh, somebody was asking me how do we perform for six minutes and everybody gets a chance to be on stage so here is the option what uh, Professor Kavi is suggesting that everybody has to be on the stage. Now it is up to you whether everybody speaks or acts or does gestures or whatever. But uh, it is a common performance finally. You, you can just say that I am a drawing board, I am just holding something that is fine. But uh, it has to be part of the presentation. So it is a, it's a group assignment, it is not an individual speaking there and it is also not that uh, I have done the slides, so that is my participation, it is not like that, right. You make a good point, you just make a uh, point here, uh, just take the mic. I just take this, it is okay, I will take it from there. Uh, there is, there is, there is a design, there is a design methodology called IDEO, have you heard of the design house called IDEO? They are a very innovative way in which they conceptualize a new product. Right? They go and talk to a lot of uh, good examples. for that device or service to fulfill. From the interviews of the various stakeholders, the users, the, 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 the manufacturers, the people who will maintain the stuff and stuff like that, they get potential design insights and then they go away and kind of huddle together in a room. Design insights, they take some cues and develop a prototype. Now the, the thing I wanted to share with you 
is that they have a prototype. That now, there are two ways that they can actually put the prototype in front of you. One is to actually build a small uh, mock-up, and the other is to enact it. Right. So I'd like you to invite. I'd like to invite you to consider this. I'll take it. So when there are six people here, so when there are six people here, you can express an idea in various ways. Don't don't feel limited by the fact that you got to put up a presentation and whoever comes here will read from the presentation or talk about those slides. It needn't be like that. You can much more effectively and entertainingly, if you like, express an idea by a little skit that you might uh, perform here with the uh, uh, presentation slides as a background. Like for instance, uh, if I want to show you what an iPad or an iPhone is, right? When there were no iPhones in the world and you had just a, a Bakelite uh, phone, you know, the blo old black big hathodas which you pick up like that. How do I share with you what an iPhone is all about? One is that I can put up a presentation on the board and go through this is an iPhone or six people here can act together as to what they can do with an iPhone, right? One chap says that, oh, I can call this and that. I'm browsing the web and stuff like this. Hey, there's a new service here. But you want a bus? I'll go to this app and kind of push this here and do things. So, but just by enacting the fact that pretend that an iPhone is already there and you can hold a cigarette box or whatever it is or some other sort of <laughs> thing in, <laughs> in front of you and act as though that's the iPod or the iPhone. And through the inaction, you can share the idea of what this concept is, right? So I feel that with six people here on stage, you got a tremendous variety of methods that you can use to, to uh, uh, communicate an idea. So don't feel limited, right? And this will be very good use of your time here. So let's say that you have 10 minutes each and over two weeks, that means about four classes. In each class, we'll have about five of these uh, presentations. Even that is ambitious because we'll have to very tightly kind of manage time here right you can wear costumes if you like you can do whatever you like right but the idea is to the whole point is to communicate an idea right so so your canvas is very wide you have presentation skills you have uh, performing uh, uh, skills here you can wear costumes to highlight some points or whatever you like right and you are free to project it you can build a little artifact right if you want to illustrate an idea and stuff like this so it's totally up to you how you want to communicate the idea behind your uh, presentation. Uh, recently we had a competition by this uh, research forum or something for the PhD students of uh, IIT and they had given six minutes exactly for a group or a person to perform and show what their PhD topic is all about. The winner of that was actually a skit and we have recorded it. So we will put up that video for the benefit of, uh, <coughs> so it was a chemical engineering <coughs> group or something and they, they did a really good job of that six minute and uh, a very complex concept like something called soothe effect or something which was enacted on the stage which uh, got the first prize. So we will put that video. <coughs> now for the <coughs> now for the assignment part I was thinking that this should be the assignment but now I am thinking of changing it slightly. Okay, so let's do both ways. Uh, so we have, you have to find out examples of how wrong graphics. So I showed some examples here and how wrong graphics are utilized here. Go back to your own topics now. You have outlines, right? And you have to suggest what type of graphics will be used there. That is one. And you can create a counter example for a bad graphic of that same idea. So instead of taking Google's help, you have to actually scratch your heads because this was quite easy. After I wrote this, I realized that it's quite easy to find out these things and there's not, no fun in that unless until you create your own uh, example for a good graphic of that particular slide or a bad graphic of that same slide. I had tough time in creating that first slide in the last presentation what I did when I started the presentation. You all remember that, right? Uh, having some bad fonts and all that. I spent the maximum time on that slide when I had to create that and with a Mac it's really difficult to create a bad design slide. So uh, the assignment for the week is to get that outline thing out of the mind map now what you have and then 
create graphics for the portions where you require them and create a counter example of a graphic for one of the slides in that. <coughs> Is it clear? Any questions on the assignment part? Yes. <coughs> so, with graphics, right. So, that is the, that is the part. So, now we will be going to the next stage where in the next uh, talk we will we'll be covering on the impress part. So, you can create black and white graph, uh, black and white presentation right now or you can create colored ones that will give me some more handles to to talk about the last part of impress, how to use color, how to use typography, fonts, how to use visual effects, transitions between the slides or within the slides itself and uh, what is the overall appeal of that. So, that is that's what will be covered in the next classes. Uh, I do not know whether we will have a combined class or a mixed class again that will communicate to you, but the assignment before that class is <coughs> what you just now heard, create outline and a presentation of <coughs> your own topic with graphics and create one example where you can create a bad or a counter graphic for your own topic, right. Thanks.